Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Given the sheer number of people that have trodden on them throughout the ages, on various journeys for a plethora of reasons, perhaps it is no wonder that some of the world's roads and highways are also some of the most haunted places on Earth. And many of the world's modern roads reside on top of grounds once home to civilizations long gone, quite possibly with an abundance of energy from long ago stored within and beneath their structures. It is quite possible, even probable, that there may one day be reasonable explanations for the multiple reports and stories of strange sightings and experiences on such apparently haunted roads. Until then, however, we need to accept that some regions of the Earth, some of them literally on our doorstep, are home to activity that is still unexplained. Blood Points Road in Illinois, for example, is quite possibly one of the most haunted roads in America. This lonely stretch is littered with paranormal activity, dark stories, and even tales of witchcraft. There are many accounts of fatal crashes on the road, as well as accounts of phantom vehicles vanishing into thin air. There are also reports of several bizarre suicides at the railroad bridge at Blood Point. Sources differ, but between four and eight bodies have been discovered hanging from the bridge. Many others have flung themselves to their deaths here, including Arthur Blood, who founded the town in 1877. So intense is the activity that many people avoid using the road altogether. Those that do often report electronic malfunctions of their car's equipment and radio. Shockingly, despite the horrors that are attributed to this place, Blood's Point is not unique when it comes to haunted roads. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! This is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode, ghost brides, phantom cars, disappearing hitchhikers, hellhounds, and other strangeness we'll look at some of the most haunted roads from around the world. If you're new here, welcome to the show. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, to visit sponsors you hear about during the show, sign up for my newsletter, connect with me on social media. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression or dark thoughts. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Now, bolt your doors lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. One of the strangest roads in the United States is perhaps Kelly Road in Pennsylvania. According to many reports from people who have traveled on this mile stretch, it is a hotspot for paranormal events. Many people who have pets and have traveled this road with them state that they suddenly become violent-natured, as if they're possessed. Strange noises are also reported from the thick and dense woodland that surrounds it. Even white figures are reported by many motorists. Some refer to this stretch of road as the Mystery Mile. Legends local to the area state the land is cursed by Native Americans whose land the road now sits on. The spotting of white figures is interesting. Hicks Road in California has regular sightings of white albino creatures 
who venture to the roadside at night from the woodlands and mountains. Local legends state these albinos are cannibals who live in shack-like huts off the beaten track. Some people who have ventured down Hicks Road also report being chased by a run-down pickup truck which suddenly disappears. Although it is impossible to travel by car, the Lawler Ford Road in Missouri, better known as Zombie Road, is one of the most haunted in Middle America. Still open to hikers, many people report seeing the spirits of Native Americans, groups of children, and industrial workers from long ago. Sightings of old Confederate soldiers from the Civil War are also common. This road was regularly used by soldiers during that time. Incidentally, it's also one of the largest Native American burial mounds in the United States. Mount Misery Road and Sweet Hollow Road are neighbors that run parallel to each other, just outside of Manhattan. As well as sharing the same stretch of land in Suffolk County, New York, they also share a long history of bizarre and chilling tales. Local history suggests that local Native American tribes considered the area cursed and wouldn't set foot on it. When pilgrims arrived and settled the region, they happily ventured into the area. Since then, the strange sightings and noises from the surrounding woodland have dominated local legends. The roads themselves are over some of the most unforgiving terrains in the New York area, and there are many crashes on record. One particular crash near the Northern State Parkway overpass would result in the death of a popular local woman. Not only are there several sightings of a mysterious lady near the overpass, there are tales of invisible hands pushing stranded motorists uphill to safety and out of harm's way. There are also more sinister tales from these roads, however, such as the policeman with the back of his head missing, or the account which tells of an asylum which burnt to the ground after a patient set it on fire in order to kill herself. Accordingly, there are reports of figures in white who roam the area. Incidentally, this is very similar to the account at the Seven Gates of Hell in Pennsylvania. Located in the Passaic County region of New Jersey is Clinton Road, an approximate 10-mile stretch of road that is home to all manner of paranormal activity and dark practices. From sightings of ghostly figures, strange lights, and even bizarre, monstrous creatures, the surrounding woodland also has rumors of satanic and occult gatherings, claims of witches, and even a place where hitmen would bring their victims to dispose of. There are even claims of a druidic temple just off the road, which some people claim still acts as a location of ritual. If that's not unnerving enough, there are also reports of phantom vehicles appearing out of nowhere on the road and approaching oncoming motorists. These can be cars, but most often it's a pickup truck. Some cars undoubtedly swerve to avoid this oncoming ghostly traffic. The ghost vehicles themselves, though, simply disappear. Perhaps the most interesting tale, though, is that of the ghost boy near a bridge on a section of the road named Dead Man's Curve. On the bridge, for reasons unknown, visitors will find a yellow line. According to local legends, if a quarter is placed on this line at midnight, the person who placed it will find it mysteriously returned to them. Other legends state that if a quarter is thrown into the water, it will be thrown back by the mysterious boy. However, if you were to stand too close to the edge of the bridge to peer over the railings, you just might find some unseen force pushing you over and into the water. Another strange location just off Clinton Road is Cross Castle, a structure built in the early 1900s by Richard Cross. However, by the time the Cross family had been long gone, the castle was partly destroyed by a fire and was left to rot in the years that followed in the second half of the 20th century. Those who venture that way today have often spoken of strange activity taking place. Many people report a feeling of despair while others even claim to have seen bruises appear out of nowhere on their bodies. Even more disturbing are the claims of people suddenly having visions in the mind, 
as if their thoughts were suddenly not their own, or of those people who have even experienced seizures while in the castle grounds. Without a doubt, one of the most chilling haunted roads of the United States can also be found in New Jersey along the tentatively titled Shades of Death Road, and yes, that is its real name. The road runs through the Liberty and Independence regions of the state and is not only said to be haunted, but also has several particularly intriguing hotspots of paranormal activity that sit alongside it. We'll return to these shortly. First, however, we'll look at some of the folklore and urban legends that give birth to some of the apparent hauntings along the road itself. Perhaps the best place to start would be the three murders that took place along this now notorious stretch of road in the 1920s and 30s. One of these was a simple case of robbery gone too far when a man was killed by a blow to the head. Another murder saw a resident of the area, Bill Cummins, shot on the roadside. Incidentally, his murder was never solved. Perhaps the most harrowing murder was when a man was beheaded by his wife, who then buried his body on different sides of the road. Even before those horrific murders, in the centuries before parts of the road were favorites of highwaymen who would not only rob their victims but usually kill them and leave them where they fell at the roadside. In return, are stories of local residents turning the tables on such highwaymen, hiding under the many trees that were scattered along the roadside, overpowering them, and then hanging them from a tree that overlooked the road. These extensive areas of woodland along the Shades of Death Road also provide cover for multiple other murders, many of which have never been solved. Furthermore, during the mid to late 1800s, Largely due to the swampland around certain parts of the road, the region suffered particularly large and severe outbreaks of malaria. As there was often little effective medical expertise or medicine in the area, many who succumbed to the disease would be taken to the roadside and left there. The reason for this was simply it presented a person's best chance of receiving medical assistance on the off chance that a doctor would pass by many people died from the disease waiting for such medical assistance. These outbreaks and the grim consequences thereof eventually resulted in the government draining the swamplands and depriving the disease-carrying insects of their habitat. In more modern times, the road has been the scene of numerous fatal car crashes, giving the road even more negative and deadly energy to draw from. And that energy likely results in the much-reported paranormal activity that continues today. There are many hot spots of paranormal activity that run alongside the Shades of Death Road. As we might imagine, before the arrival of the Pilgrims, Native American tribes would have inhabited the lands the road runs through now. It's perhaps no surprise, then, to hear of sightings of Native American spirit guides who seemingly morph into an animal, most often, in these local accounts, a deer. What is particularly intriguing about these sightings are the local legends that should a motorist see this spirit guide on the road itself but continue on without slowing, then you're likely to be involved in a collision with a deer shortly after. Furthermore, there are legends of ghostly Native American activity at Ghost Lake. Many who visit there report how the sky appears bright as day even though it is late at night. Others even report strange pillars of mist that rise out of the water and then vanish again. One local resident, Peter Valliere, would claim that he had heard legends of Native Americans being murdered by early settlers before throwing them into the lake. He would also claim to have seen the strange mist pillars himself. Equally unsettling are the claims surrounding Lenape Lane, a dead-end roadway that runs off the main road. At the end of this road is an abandoned farmhouse. Many who have dared to visit the location speak of seeing strange, ghostly figures as well as bizarre and fast-appearing mists or fogs. Perhaps even stranger are the orbs of light that are sometimes reported in this region. Perhaps it's the name, although it is now known as Highway 191, a road labeled Highway 666 was surely bound to attract strange activity and multiple accidents. 
and that is certainly the case here. Maybe the reason for the many accidents along this stretch of road is down to the many ghostly apparitions and strange figures that seemingly appear out of nowhere. For example, many people speak of seeing a girl walking calmly at the side of the road. However, should you decide to approach this girl to offer help, she will simply disappear. Even more chilling are the accounts that tell of motorists suddenly noticing a strange figure in the back seat of the car while driving. They often vanish as soon as they're noticed. Some researchers and those local to the area suggest always ensuring that there is no space left in the vehicle for such ghostly hitchhikers. There is even a report from one stunned motorist who witnessed a truck traveling down the road toward him. The vehicle had seemingly appeared out of nowhere, but that wasn't the strangest thing. The strangest part of the sighting was that the truck appeared to be engulfed in flames. The motorist would pull his vehicle to the side of the road and then exit it, stepping several feet away so as to avoid any collision. The truck passed the car and disappeared into the distance. In short, whether it is merely urban legends or very real, those who are familiar with Highway 666 offer that should you spot anything strange or untoward along the road or the roadside, the best thing to do is to keep going. Although it's not the road itself, but a small, abandoned park that Mary Angela Road leads to, it is most certainly worthy of inclusion here, and not just because of the chilling, creepy atmosphere that permeates the region, but also due to the, at times, aggressive response to visitors by some local residents in this area of Tennessee. The ruined park is a bizarre, one-time community full of strange, abandoned buildings, one of which is an abandoned Masonic Lodge, complete with many Masonic symbols inside. It resides at the end of the above road on the outskirts of Memphis, Tennessee, not far from the Mississippi River. It is known, at least to those outside of the region, as Voodoo Village. What's perhaps most interesting, rather than legend stemming from the immediate community, which would usually be the case, it appears in this case those urban myths come from those who visit the site. These include that satanic rituals take place there, some of which even include animal sacrifice. Of course, this is disputed by the local residents, and there have been heated exchanges, even some rumored physical attacks from those who might come across adventure seekers looking to explore. Especially if those people are looking to take pictures of the abandoned facility or capture video footage of it. Whether this is because they don't wish their home to attract more unwanted attention or whether there is genuinely something to hide perhaps remains open to debate for some. However, whether the rumors of the activities there are true or not, one thing that most who have visited the Voodoo Village agree on is that there is a very definite weird atmosphere surrounding it. What's more, this is usually noticed along Mary Angela Road before you even arrive at the abandoned park, almost as if there is a strange presence looking to guard entry to the location, at least until some of the locals can arrive. Not to be confused with the Dead Man's Curve along the Clinton Road in New Jersey, the Dead Man's Curve Road in Cincinnati, Ohio is one that claims to be haunted and, unlike local folklore legends, also has some real officially documented incidents that, in theory, back them up. And not just that, the road is said by residents of the state to be the most haunted spot in the whole of Ohio. Originally part of the Ohio Turnpike, the road has been open to traffic of all kinds since the early 1830s. As we might imagine, it will have seen its fair share of accidents, many of which were fatal. Perhaps that is why there are numerous reports each year of strange figures appearing in the road or at the roadside. Some reports even speak of a strange hitchhiker who walks along the roadside. This mysterious man is often dressed in light trousers and blue shirt. Some descriptions claim the figure to have long hair. However, it is the face that is perhaps most alarming. Given when the figure turns to face a slowing vehicle ready to offer him a lift, there is simply a black blank surface instead of the features of a human face. Even more disturbing 
are the reports that this faceless hitchhiker will sometimes chase vehicles. Others claim that rocks suddenly hit their vehicle after such a sighting, although they can't see where the rocks are coming from or who is throwing them. Sightings of strange figures on the road appearing out of nowhere or of even stranger figures looking to hitch rides along the roadside continue today, as does the interest in the road from paranormal investigators and enthusiasts alike. There are several other mysterious roads in Ohio. For example, Gormley Road in the Fayette County region of the state is one that many local residents claim has a bad feeling about it, and that well might be true with the numerous car accidents that have happened there. As a result, it is believed by some that many spirits of those who lost their lives on the road roam the area. Indeed, researchers and enthusiasts who have visited the region often speak of hearing strange whispering going on around them, although they can't quite place the direction and they certainly can't see anybody there. Others will speak of seeing strange movements in the surrounding woodland or on the road itself out of the corner of their eye. Another allegedly haunted road in Ohio can be found in the town of Mansfield. There, the reformatory road is said to contain the spirit of an eccentric woman named Phoebe Weiss, who did actually exist, who lived alone in a property along the road. Wise would ultimately inherit the money of the family upon their death, and as soon as news of this spread, and at least according to some local legends, many opportunistic criminals made efforts to obtain these riches, even breaking into her home on several occasions. They were never successful, though. Following her death in 1933, however, many people began to report seeing the elderly lady wandering along Reformatory Road at night. Like many other such spirits, she would often disappear into thin air. There are several reasons as to why she might roam the road. The most popular of these, and perhaps most credible if the sightings are ever proven authentic, is that she is permanently keeping watch along the road for such criminal types as the one who made attempts to steal her riches. The United States is not the only place you'll find haunted roads, as the UK has more than its fair share, as we'll find out when Weird Darkness returns. Hey, weirdos. Thank you so much to everybody who has been donating to our Overcoming the Darkness campaign. This makes nine years of doing the podcast, several years of doing this fundraiser, and you guys just continue to surprise me with your gifts, and thank you so much for that. I do have a few people to thank, like Donna, who uh, donated $20, Elsa donated $25, Melody donated $20, Samantha came in with a whopping $50, Michelle donated 5 out of her resources, Francis, $25, Pamela donated $20, and Doris sent in $10. Thank you so much to everybody who's donated. We're currently now at $485 towards our $5,000 goal for the end of this month. So we have a long way to go, but a huge thanks to everybody who's already jumped in and helped us get to where we are. Our annual Overcoming the Darkness campaign is all about depression, anxiety, thoughts of suicide or self-harm. We're wanting to help people to rid their lives of those things. And it's the only fundraiser that we have all year long, so it is pretty special. Again, you can donate by going to WeirdDarkness.com slash overcoming. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash overcoming. And this year, whatever we raise is going to be divided four ways equally to four different organizations that help people who struggle with depression. If you or somebody you know does suffer, well, this is a perfect opportunity to show your support. Go to WeirdDarkness.com slash Overcoming. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash Overcoming. Although it certainly doesn't boast as much land as America, 
The United Kingdom contains many roads with haunted reputations and paranormal activity. Perhaps the most famous is the Stocks Bridge Bypass, which we'll examine in its own right very shortly, such is the wealth of intriguing accounts there. However, there are many others that boast ghostly apparitions and chilling entities. Perhaps one of the most bizarre can be witnessed along the B-3212 in Dartmoor, Devon, where local legends state that hairy hands will suddenly appear out of nowhere and grab the steering wheel of unsuspecting motorists. Once these mysterious hands take a hold, they then attempt to steer the vehicle into other motorists or off the side of the road. These strange incidents have been happening since the early years of motoring. In fact, the first incident was reported in 1921 when a motorcycle rider, along with his two children in a sidecar, suddenly began to struggle with the handlebars. As he did so, he shouted at his children to jump from the sidecar to the safety of the ground as he felt something steering the handlebars of the motorcycle against his will. The children did indeed leap to safety, but their father ultimately died in the ensuing crash. There are other seemingly beastly roads for us to examine. In the East Riding of Yorkshire, for example, there have been some truly bizarre and disturbing claims of half-beast, half-human figures seen on the B-1249. Two specific encounters perhaps stand out from the others. During the 1960s, a tale surfaced via the author Charles Christian of a truck driver who claimed to have witnessed a red-eyed, hairy creature along the road that had attempted to smash its way into the cabin of the vehicle. In more recent times, in August 2016, a local resident claimed to have seen a monstrous creature similar to a large dog but with a human face. What's more, the young woman claimed the creature was likely larger than a car. Interestingly, wolves did call the region home until the 1600s, when they were essentially made extinct through uncontrolled hunting. Perhaps the fittingly named A666, otherwise called the Devil's Highway in Bolton, is also worthy of our time. According to local residents, several accidents have occurred here, the result of motorists witnessing a strange, hunched-over figure making its way along the roadside. The figure then disappears. Intriguingly, in 2015, a motorist's dash cam appeared to capture a bizarre, white figure that appeared seemingly out of thin air. Should you decide to take a journey down the M6 in the United Kingdom, there's a chance you might see a legion of Roman soldiers marching alongside your vehicle, at least according to the legends. The majority of these sightings take place at Junction 19 of the North-South Link to Rugby. What is perhaps interesting is that two major Roman roads existed close to Rugby the Fosse Way and Watling Street, with great sections of both roads still existing today. Furthermore, these roads would both cross at what we call today High Cross. In Roman times, this meeting point was called Venene. It's just over 10 miles from Rugby. A Roman British settlement and fort are still visible in High Cross today, and it is well documented that the Romans had a considerable presence in the UK. In October 2016, however, came the discovery of an ancient Roman settlement just outside of Rugby. The remains date back to between 1000 and 500 BC. Along with the regular sightings of Roman soldiers on the M6, this may suggest the area to be one of unknown importance of an unknown event in Roman history, strong enough to have left such an impression of energy across the centuries. It isn't just Roman soldiers, however. There have been reports of strange activity since the road's official opening in December 1958. Many ghost cars are seen on the side of the road as if they've been in a horrific accident. Perhaps more frightening and dangerous are the reports of the phantom lorry driving the wrong way down the motorway. There are plenty of other spine-tingling sections of roads in the United Kingdom. The A229 in Kent, for example, has regular sightings of a lady dressed in white who appears on the road only to disappear again shortly after. What is particularly strange is that a young lady named Judith Langham was knocked down and killed on this stretch of road in 1965. Furthermore, it was on her wedding day, 
and she was wearing her bridal dress. Some sources state the incident took place on her hen night, that is, the night of her bachelorette party. There is also the strange tales of people who have picked up a hitchhiker on this stretch of road. This talkative fellow is pleasant enough, only he suddenly vanishes once you leave the A229. Many people have reported this. We can only guess at how many others neglected to speak of their strange ordeals. A section of road in South London, the A21, is even stranger. Many motorists report that the road simply disappears in front of them. This happens where the new section of the dual carriageway meets the old gracious lane. As the road vanishes, another road takes its place, which leads cars the wrong way. There are also reports of a ghostly figure. Many report a gray-haired woman in a long coat. Widely regarded as the most haunted road in Scotland is the A75. Many motorists report animals or even people appearing out of nowhere and then vanishing just as quickly. In 1962, two brothers, Derek and Norman Ferguson, would report a phantom hen flying directly at their windshield, only to vanish at the moment of impact. In 1997, motorist Donna Maxwell would report to police she had hit someone who had suddenly appeared in the road. Despite an extensive search of the area, though, no pedestrian came forward. Without a doubt, another of the most intriguing roads in the United Kingdom can be found in West Haughton in Manchester. Platt Lane appears to be nothing other than an ordinary road at first sight. However, according to local legend and indeed a small plethora of witnesses, there is a good chance that you might see the odd, ghostly figure making their way along the roadside, and even on the road itself. Specifically, the ghosts of dead miners from one of the worst mining disasters in UK history, the Pretoria Pit, which resides close to the road. On the 21st of December 1910, at a little before 8 a.m., an explosion ripped through the shafts of the mine. It resulted the buildup of gas because of a collapsed roof, and so trapping around 900 workers. Although the explosion did cause some of the deaths, most of them, 344 in total, were caused by carbon monoxide poisoning. Many who have ventured down the road have reported seeing miners walking along, sometimes even with a pickaxe in their hand, seemingly on their way to work, as they would have done over 100 years ago. Some people have even claimed to have seen miners pushing a coal cart back in the direction of the old mine. Perhaps a little more unnerving are the sightings of miners who simply stand motionless at the roadside, all apart from their eyes, which watch the motorists as they drive by. Sightings still continue, albeit randomly, to this day. As we'll see, north of the English border, Scotland is home to many haunted roads as well. For example, near the town of Blair Gowdy is A93, said to be home to a hellhound who patrols the road at night with glowing red eyes. There's also a strange beast to be found in Skye, known as the Beast of Odal, and who is said to have haunted the Pass of Odal for many years. Although this creature most often appeared in the form of a beast-like entity, it would appear, if we assume for one moment that it is undoubtedly real, that it has shape-shifting abilities. Some people, for example, claim the beast appears as a one-legged man, while others claim it takes the form of a greyhound-type dog. Others don't see the beast at all, but merely hear the monstrous screams and cries seemingly coming out of nowhere but all around them at the same time. Perhaps of even more concern to those who have traveled along the pass, particularly during the night hours, are the accounts of people being physically thrown to the ground by an invisible force, presumably the beast of the pass. In fact, when the discovery of a man with two specific pierced wounds in his chest was made at the roadside, the sightings and strange activity were said to have ceased. What was interesting is the wounds were found to have not been caused by another person. Scotland, though, has legends of ghosts of a more mechanical nature. According to the book Scottish Ghosts by Dane Love, which I've linked to in the show notes, many motorists have reported seeing phantom vehicles on the A7 near Stow in Midlothian. And what's more, the sudden appearance and disappearance of these ghostly vehicles 
have seemingly caused several accidents. According to Love's research, several motorists over the years have been driving along the road, following what appears to be a normal and solid car in front of them. However, the car will suddenly disappear into thin air, often leaving the following motorists having to slam on the brakes before they hit a wall or go off of a bend in the road. Phantom cars are also reported in various locations on the island of Skye. On the A87, there have been many reports of a phantom vehicle dating right the way back to the early 1940s. The first sighting, thought to have been in 1941, was by Dr. Alan McDonald, who noticed a car following behind him one evening. When he pulled over, however, in order to let the car pass, the unnerving vehicle had seemingly vanished. If we turn our attention back to the research of Dane Love for a moment, we discover that he writes of several further appearances of phantom vehicles, again on the island of Skye between the towns of Sconser and Drynock, known as the A850 and the A863. Similar to the details in the previous account, many motorists over the years have reported a strange vehicle, usually driving toward them, that then appears to disappear into thin air. One witness even claimed to have seen the ghostly car during daylight hours. Without a doubt, much like the United States, many intriguing and at times unsettling accounts of haunted roads can be found in Australia. There are many spooky roadways to examine. For example, along the Newell Highway in New South Wales, there is the legend of the Pilliga Princess, a local homeless woman who roamed the highway pushing a shopping cart full of her possessions until her death in 1993 after being hit by a truck. Although her death was nothing but an accident, it is claimed by many that she still roams the road to this very day. And what's more, she's often seen pushing the very same shopping cart. There is also Straws Lane, sometimes known as Anti-Gravity Hill, due to the odd anomaly that makes it appear as though your car is rolling uphill. And while this is very likely an optical illusion of sorts, a combination of a bizarre landscape and winds that make the trees take on an unusual angle, there are many who believe a portal or a gateway is responsible for such activity. Perhaps one of the most unnerving roads is known as Bloody Mile in Shell Harbor. According to one researcher, at least 13 murders have taken place along the road, which perhaps makes the reports of strange apparitions and bizarre sounds even more concerning. Located in New South Wales, one of the most intriguing Australian haunted roads could very well be Lemon Tree Passage Road. There are numerous witness reports of suddenly appearing lights which seem to appear, in particular, behind motorists who are traveling faster than perhaps they should. One urban legend of what's behind the ghostly appearances along the road dates back to the 1980s. According to the story, a fatal motorcycle accident occurred here, with the rider losing his leg and his passenger losing his life. Since then, especially if a motorist is speeding too fast down the road, the ghostly apparition of the bike appears almost as a warning. One person who believes he's witnessed just such an apparition is local resident Joe Finn. He was riding along the road shortly after midnight one evening, a passenger in a friend's car, when he suddenly saw what he thought was the single headlight of a Harley-Davidson motorbike in the side mirror of the vehicle. He would later claim that the light appeared all of a sudden and was approaching really fast behind us. It wasn't long before the driver of the car noticed it too. They would estimate it was around 20 meters away from them. Then another vehicle approached and passed them on the opposite side of the road. The moment it passed the light behind them, the light disappeared. In fact, legends such as these seemingly so gripped people that a movie, Lemon Tree Passage, was made based on it in 2014. Two more people who believed they've had strange experiences on the road are Tanya Locking and Leanne Kakaloudis, who would speak of their encounter publicly shortly after the film's release in 2014, an encounter that took place over a quarter of a century earlier. According to their account, they were driving along the road, once more at some point after midnight, when out of nowhere a strange, single light appeared. Although it didn't immediately concern Tanya, she recalled that it was very close behind me. 
Just as she was about to tell her friend of the light, it disappeared. The two women began to chat once more. However, several moments later, the bizarre light suddenly reappeared. This time, Leanne did see the strange glow. Tanya urged her to climb into the back seat and take a closer look at what it was, but Leanne was too freaked out to do so. Instead, however, stuck her head out of the passenger window. She would claim that there was no noise whatsoever, meaning that the light didn't belong to a motorbike, nor could it have been a part of a bicycle as it was moving much too fast. Now, more than unnerved as to what the strange light might be, Tanya pressed down on the accelerator in an attempt to leave the chilling glow behind. Eventually, the light disappeared once more, this time for good. The two women decided to keep the incident to themselves and didn't speak of it for well over a decade. Regarded by some as Australia's most haunted road is Wakehurst Parkway, in particular a stretch of road that runs near the Deep Creek Reserve, which could very well be due to the fact that several murders have taken place there, as well as numerous dead bodies being dumped on the land. There have been many strange reports of paranormal activity that have come from this ghostly road. For example, some motorists have reported their windscreen wipers turning on and off by themselves, or even not working at all. Others have claimed that their car doors suddenly lock of their own accord, and that car radios will suddenly switch on or off. Perhaps one of the most unnerving sightings of a ghostly figure one might have while driving along Wakehurst Parkway is that Kelly a mysterious apparition of a woman who appears out of nowhere at night, only to disappear just as motorists swerve to avoid her. Some people have even claimed the ghostly lady has appeared in the back of the cars as they're driving, only to disappear a moment later. One such encounter involved a taxi driver, Hla U, who claimed that a gray silhouette of a thin young woman suddenly appeared in the back of his taxi in 2010. He would claim that although he could not see her face, he could make out deep green eyes that had a sad look to them. What's more, the strange woman was staring straight at him. He immediately put on the brakes, and the woman disappeared. There have been many claims as to who Kelly might be, including that she is the spirit of a young woman who lost her life in a tragic accident on the road, or even a nun. Many who have seen her claim she is dressed in a long white dress. One investigator into the apparition, filmmaker Bianca Biasi, claims to have gotten to the bottom of the identity of the mystery woman, and she believes that there's likely a connection to Manley's Quarantine Station, itself a haunted location near the road. The station itself was operational from the early 1830s right the way until 1984. Many who arrived in Sydney by ship would have to spend time here, and many didn't leave the facility alive. In fact, according to a 2018 interview with Nine News, it was while she was doing other unrelated work at the quarantine station that she stumbled upon a photo that showed nurses in old-style uniforms, uniforms that were identical to descriptions of Kelly. She would elaborate that it wasn't the spirit of a nun or a young woman in a wedding dress. It was a nurse's outfit. It could be, then, that Kelly is actually a nurse who worked at the quarantine station. At the time of the interview, Biasi was going through records of those who worked at the station in an attempt to find a match for Kelly. However, during their research into the Kelly apparition and the hauntings at the quarantine station, Biasi and her crew have had their own frightening encounters. Perhaps the most unnerving occurred one evening while they were filming in the location when a truly strange glow suddenly appeared directly behind the actress who was playing Kelly. Neither the film crew or anyone at the location at the time has ever been able to explain it. The actress herself was seemingly so shook up by the incident that she refused to return to the location ever again. Without a doubt, one of the strangest and most disturbing legends connected to apparently haunted roads is that of the Lady in Black, who is said to haunt the Mount Victoria Pass in the Blue Mountains. According to some research, the ghost is the spirit of a young woman named Caroline Collette who was beaten to death by a former boyfriend in 1842 and discarded on the roadside. She has, according to some, roamed the Mount Victoria Pass ever since, 
with sightings stretching back to at least the mid-19th century. Early reports claimed that those who traveled the route would suddenly experience their horses rearing up, becoming anxious and refusing to go on. This tended to happen near the bridge. Suddenly, the ghostly figure of a woman dressed in black would appear. As we might expect, there were several different details that arise in each different account. Some would speak of how her eyes appeared animal-like, almost shining, while others would tell of how her hair appeared to blow in an invisible-type wind. Some would even speak of her appearing headless. Almost as soon as she appeared, she would seemingly disappear again. The sightings of the apparent lady in black continue still today, and while we might argue that this ghoulish apparition is perhaps more of an urban legend in our contemporary era, the fact that people still believe they have seen her shows how relevant the activity remains. A particularly spooky location can be found in New Zealand, and the many sightings of a ghostly apparition are most certainly worth our time examining here. According to legend, during the construction of the tunnel, which is a little over five miles long, a Scottish laborer was killed during an accident. Those who subscribe to the legends state that the ghost of the Scottish laborer is often seen, either in the tunnel itself or walking along the old coach road itself, seemingly in an attempt to make his way home. One particularly intriguing detail about this particular spook is that witnesses claim he is always seen heading toward the east. In this direction is the coastal town of Littleton, where the Scotsman could indeed have boarded a ship and set out for home. Like other haunted roads we've examined here, as long as sightings of the ghostly laborer continue, the legend will continue to live on. Coming up, some roads are spooky, not because of spirits, but because of how they mess with your mind, such as a certain road in Croatia that can induce hallucinations. I'll tell you about it up next. October is the anniversary of Weird Darkness, and we celebrate by raising funds through our Overcoming the Darkness campaign to help people who suffer from depression. Jamie gave to the Overcoming the Darkness campaign a few years ago, and when she did, she left a message saying, I live in the smallest of small towns, and Weird Darkness makes me smile, sometimes uncontrollably. I suffered from depression for the first time after my father passed away in 2013. It was awful. I didn't understand at first what I was feeling. It's debilitating. Also, my child suffers from extreme depression, and I didn't know how to help. It makes you feel useless. Well, of course, he loves your podcast, too, since I shared it with him. Thanks for all you do. To other listeners, come on, people. More donations. We should be able to surpass the goal. Donate, donate, donate. <laughs> well, I can't really add anything to what Jamie just said, except to say that you can donate, donate, donate by visiting WeirdDarkness.com slash overcoming. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash overcoming. The A3 motorway, or at least a section of it in Croatia, is largely seen as one of the most bizarre in Europe. The stretch in question, in between Staro Petrovo Selo and Novogradishka, experiences some of the most unusual events on record. According to people local to the area, it is dark forces who are to blame, as drivers experience hallucinations and unexplained phenomena. There have been more than 2,000 accidents on this particular stretch of road, with just short of 200 injuries and over 50 deaths. People often report seeing ghostly figures at the side or in the middle of the road. There are also regular reports of a strange girl at the roadside, standing as if she is waiting for a lift. When drivers get out of their cars to help, the girl is nowhere to be seen. 
The Belgian Tunnel on the A2 motorway between Basel and Chasso in Switzerland is also home to a ghostly presence. Most specifically, that of an old woman dressed completely in white and consequently referred to as the White Lady. The stories began almost as soon as the tunnel opened in the early 1960s, with many people reporting they had picked up the woman as a hitchhiker. She would sometimes speak to the driver, often making predictions and warnings. As the vehicle entered the Belgian Tunnel, however, this mysterious lady would disappear from her seat. Some people report a similar story, only the person in white is a male hitchhiker. Perhaps, if we believe the accounts to be real, this suggests that the spirit can manifest itself in different forms. It might not look like the most terrifying location, but the so-called Screaming Tunnel that resides under the Grand Trunk Railroad in Niagara Falls is said to be one of the most unnerving places in Canada. According to legends, if you should venture inside, you will hear the screams of a girl who died over 100 years ago. Legends state that should you venture into the tunnel after dark, some accounts state it should be done around midnight and strike a match off the tunnel wall, the screams will begin soon after. How accurate these legends might be is perhaps open to debate. The tunnel, though, which is otherwise unremarkable and was merely built as a drainage passage to stop the above tracks from becoming flooded, is one of the most visited locations in Canada by thrill-seekers and those with an interest in the paranormal. The story itself, like others over the decades, has taken on a feeling that is more at home with modern urban legends. Initially, the ghost of the tunnel was that of a young girl who had lived at a farm near the tunnel. However, a fire broke out at the farm, eventually causing the young girl to run screaming from the house completely ablaze. She ran into the tunnel, screaming in pain and fear, where she collapsed and ultimately died. As the decades went by, though, the grisly tale morphed into a young girl who was intentionally set alight and left to burn to death by her enraged father. In more recent times, the account claimed the girl was assaulted, beaten, and raped in the tunnel, and then her dead body set on fire to essentially hide any evidence of the crime. Whatever the truth of the legend, if there is indeed any truth at all to it, people still flock to the location to see the menacing tunnel for themselves. And we should note, even those that are skeptical of the legend and the apparent paranormal activity that is said to take place there state that there is most definitely a strange and disturbing atmosphere to be felt there, an atmosphere that is almost palpable. It's probably very much worth our time examining some of the world's haunted bridges. After all, while the bridge itself in the following cases is the apparent central point of paranormal activity, they are reached by roads on either side. We might note, incidentally, that while there will undoubtedly be haunted bridges all over the world in almost every country, many of the most well-known appear to reside in the United States. We'll start, though, with an alleged haunted bridge north of America's border in Canada. The Dunvegan Bridge in Alberta, Canada is not one that necessarily features the kind of ghosts that will send you running in the opposite direction as fast as your legs will carry you, but rather it appears to be a place mixed with sightings of a strange but seemingly harmless entity and local folklore and urban legend. The legend states that almost as soon as the bridge opened in late 1960 did two local residents witness something bizarre in the middle of it. They were traveling in their car along the bridge in a particularly violent snowstorm. However, when they each saw the sudden appearance of a strange woman in the middle of the road, they brought their vehicle to a stop. As if that wasn't bizarre enough, the woman was barefoot while otherwise dressed in a hooded white cloak. The men approached the woman and asked if she was all right and if she needed a ride. However, she simply ignored them as if they weren't there. The two men returned to their vehicle and continued on their way. They would return to the same spot over the next week or so in the hopes of seeing the strange woman again. They would even bring other friends with them so that they had further witnesses to what they now suspected was a ghost. Eventually, they did indeed see her again, dressed in the same clothes and appearing to pick berries. Even the snow was still thick on the ground. 
Whoever the woman in white might have been is open for debate, as is whether there are any further similar reports. The Dunvegan Bridge, though, is said to be one of the most active paranormal locations in Canada. Without a doubt, one of the strangest and most harrowing ghostly bridges is the Dalmarnock Bridge in Glasgow in Scotland. It is there that many motorists approaching the bridge, or even those walking near it, often see a man in his 30s preparing to leap from the edge of the railings. When he does jump, though, he simply disappears before he hits the ground. Many of those who have witnessed this apparent suicidal ghost all attest to how real, solid, and normal he appears. That is, until he jumps and vanishes from sight. The identity of the ghostly figure when they were alive is not known. However, the fact that so many people have witnessed the ghost leap to his death should tell us that something strange does indeed manifest there. Of course, if any researcher or passerby happened to capture footage of the leaping ghost, that would certainly add that extra touch of credibility. Officially called the Old Alton Bridge, Goldman's Bridge near Denton in Texas is home to one of the most interesting, if chilling, legends on record. The bridge was an important piece of infrastructure when it was first built as it enabled the transportation of goods, produce, cattle, and even people to become much quicker. However, the history of the bridge is a lot darker, and what's more, the account is said to have taken place in relatively recent times. In the mid-1930s, Oscar Washburn, who happened to be black, gave himself the name the Goat Man due to his apparently extremely successful goat breeding programs, and what's more, he intended to get his name out to as many people as possible. He would eventually place a sign on the bridge directing people to his property. In reaction to this, a faction of the KKK would seek out Washburn, abduct him from his home, and then hang him from that bridge. However, when they went to ensure that he was dead, his body was not only not at the end of the rope, but it had seemingly disappeared into thin air. Legends state that in response to this, the group returned to Washburn's home, possibly looking to see if the goat breeder had returned there. Upon discovering he had not, they proceeded to murder any family members who were in the house. We should mention that the goat man was not seen again, at least not alive. As you might imagine, in the decades that followed the apparent multiple murders, there have been multiple reports of strange lights on the bridge, as well as sightings of the goat man himself. According to locals, if you're brave enough to drive across the bridge at night with no headlights, then the goat man will appear in front of your vehicle. Another bizarrely haunted bridge also sits in Texas and dates back to an apparent account of vengeance in the mid-1800s. Just outside of San Antonio, the bridge, which overlays Elm Creek, is said to be home to a spirit of a long-dead woman known to locals as the Donkey Lady. According to legend, the Donkey Lady was once the wife of a Texas rancher who lived close by with their family. However, although the details are sketchy, things began to unravel from the family when the son of a rich and influential local businessman was seemingly attacked by one of the family's donkeys. In response, the young man began to hit and kick at the animal. The family witnessed this apparent exchange and ran over to the scene to stop the killing of one of their valuable animals. They would resort to throwing stones toward the young man, who eventually ceased his actions and left the scene. However, as he did so, he promised he would be back for revenge for the family's actions. And that was a promise that he made good on. That evening, after having rounded several people from the town to assist him, he returned to the ranch and set it ablaze. When neighbors attempted to put the fire out and warn the family, they were purposely held back. Eventually, the donkey lady's husband managed to fight through the flames and exited the burning building. For his troubles, however, the young man aimed his gun at him and shot him dead. Satisfied with their work, the mob left the house to burn to the ground. It is assumed that the children perished inside, but legend claims that the wife managed to escape, even though she was extremely badly burned from head to toe. The account states she found a sanctuary of sorts at the bridge. However, no one ever saw her again. Whether she died of her injuries or simply left the area is unknown. 
In the years that followed, there were many sightings of the badly burned woman, now referred to as the Donkey Lady, and these sightings continue into the modern age. The bridge is a popular location with genuine paranormal investigators and adventure seekers. How true the legend is, though, and how genuine the claims of seeing the incinerated woman remains up for debate. An unused bridge in Salem, Ohio is equally as disturbing. Perhaps more so as visitors to the bridge are forbidden from driving their cars over it due to the unsound condition it remains in. Instead, they must park their vehicles nearby and proceed on foot. And when they do, they can expect to hear the cries of pain and anguish of the spirits of several children. Whatever the realities of the bridge might be, there are several local urban legends that surround it. Most revolve around a young child drowning in the water below, or sometimes of a mother attempting to save her child from the water, but failing. Ultimately, though, locals will tell you that several young children have died in the water near the bridge. Paranormal investigators have a particular interest in the Egypt Road Bridge, and several strange incidents and sightings have been witnessed by such teams. Furthermore, unlike many roads and bridges we've mentioned here, these paranormal episodes are said to take place at any time of the day and night. Although there have been no actual sightings of ghosts or spirits at Airtight Bridge in Ashmore, Illinois, many who visit it, and plenty more who purposefully avoid it, claim there is an instant feeling of dread and anxiousness that overcomes them when they approach. When we note that a brutal murder likely happened under the bridge in 1980, then perhaps those feelings of dread are all the more understandable. On that day, the discovery was made of a murdered woman under the bridge. Her hands had been removed, meaning that it would take police over a decade to identify her. When they finally did, naming her as Diana Maria Riordan Small, it failed to lead to any new leads and her murder remains unsolved today. Whether her spirit does indeed haunt the bridge, resulting in the chilling feelings that many claim they have felt there, is open to debate. And despite no concrete sightings of the murdered woman, the bridge is perhaps an ideal place to study such build-ups of energy following such a traumatic event. Perhaps what is particularly interesting about the Colville Covered Bridge in Bourbon County, Kentucky, is that sightings of strange ghosts did not begin at the levels they are today until well over a hundred years after it was built, starting in 2001. This happened, incidentally, when the bridge was essentially torn down and then reopened. It just might be the case that this rebuilding of the bridge is what caused the supposed spirits that people claim to see today to become disturbed. The spirits in question, at least according to local legend, belonged to a boyfriend and girlfriend who were driving home over the bridge at some point in the early 1930s. However, for reasons unknown, they lost control of the car they were driving, careened over the bridge and into the icy waters below. Both ultimately lost their lives. Although many locals would report strange lights underneath the bridge in the years that followed, it wasn't until relatively recent years that the location became a favorite of paranormal investigators and those who simply had an interest in ghosts and apparitions. As well as the young couple, another local legend states you'll possibly see the ghost of an old woman who simply collapsed and died while crossing the bridge. As unremarkable as it might look, the location does indeed appear to be an unnerving one. Another bridge, said to be haunted as a result of a car accident, can be found in South Carolina. The Poinsett Bridge in Greenville County is said to be the home of bizarre sounds, including voices that have been captured on tape, strange orbs and lights, and general noises that only serve to make the already creepy atmosphere all the more creepier. Most local legends claim that the hauntings are due to a car accident that happened on the bridge at some point in the 1950s, a young man who was driving passed away at the scene. There are many other tales to consider, though, and given that the bridge is one of the oldest in the United States, those accounts go way back. One particularly repeated detail is that the bridge was once the grim location where several slaves were hanged. While many of these accounts may be more folklore and urban legend, 
the Poinsett Bridge is most certainly a location that deserves further study in terms of the paranormal activity that takes place there. One of the most spiritually active roads in the world began experiencing hauntings even before it was opened to the public. I'll tell you about the Stocks Bridge Bypass when Weird Darkness returns. The political season is upon us, and those flying the red colors have their promises. The politicians wearing blue have different promises, but those of us in the cryptid party have only one promise – to stay hidden and mind our own business. Don't let the political pundits, the candidates, the PACs, or your close-minded brainwashed family and friends tell you who to vote for. You're smarter than that. That's why I'm telling you who to vote for. This November, pull the lever for Bigfoot and Mothman. Our new president, Bigfoot, won't make the same mistakes as humans have. Because he's not human, Bigfoot loves our country and you, so much so that he knows you have a better idea of how to run your life than he does, so he's staying out of your life. With Vice President Mothman, their new administration will do what no administration has done in the past – absolutely nothing. Show your support for the Cryptid Party by grabbing your Bigfoot Mothman 2024 merchandise with campaign buttons and stickers, hats shirts, tote bags, mugs, hoodies, giant tapestries, pillows, magnets, even clothes for your kids to get them into the spirit of the political season. This year, vote for someone you can trust in, believe in, even without scientific proof of their existence. A vote for Bigfoot and Mothman is a vote you can be proud to tell others about. Get your Bigfoot and Mothman 2024 merchandise now at WeirdDarkness.com slash shirts. Available in all sizes and colors, even red and blue if you want to confuse people about your party loyalties. The new Bigfoot and Mothman 2024 political campaign merchandise at WeirdDarkness.com slash shirts. Quite possibly, one of the most active roads in the world, certainly in Europe, is the Stocksbridge Bypass near Sheffield, South Yorkshire. Sightings would start almost as soon as work began on the new bypass in 1987. One of the incidents on record is from the 8th of September of that year. Two security guards who performed night patrols on the site would report numerous strange and bizarre events. This would include seeing children playing in a nearby field and then disappearing into thin air. Each child adorned extremely old-fashioned clothing, perhaps hundreds of years old. Construction workers who lived on the site in the temporary accommodation caravans would also report numerous strange goings-on. For example, many would report hearing children laughing and singing during the night. When the workers would look outside, there was, however, no children there. Perhaps the most terrifying encounter was the large black figure overlooking the site and the two security guards from the Peroid Bridge. One of the guards would set off at his van in an attempt to drive up to the bridge and confront whoever it was. The other remained below, keeping the strange figure in sight. It remained in the same spot simply overlooking the new bypass. As his colleague arrived on the bridge, the headlights of the van would find the cloaked person. To both the security guard's horror, the lights would go straight through the figure, as if it wasn't there. It then faded away and vanished right in front of them. Both security guards, now terrified, left the site and went to report the encounter to the local police. Following the report of the security guards, the police would send two officers out to investigate this most bizarre incident. Special Constable John Beat and Police Constable Dick Ellis would investigate the site on the 11th of September. They would park their vehicle close to the bridge where the two men had witnessed the cloaked figure and killed the engine. They would remain looking out over the new bypass for close to 20 minutes. 
Suddenly, a thud came at the passenger window and Beat let out a horrified scream. Against the glass was the torso of a man. Ellis had barely had time to react and turn towards his partner when the strange figure had vanished. Ellis started the engine of the car and after taking several deep breaths, motioned the car forward slowly. They decided to move to under the bridge, believing the incident to be a hoax by local teenagers. From there, they would radio the incident back to the station and request another unit to assist in search of the area. Before they had a chance to do so, however, something began to shake their car violently and loud thuds connecting with the bodywork came from the outside. Ellis pushed down on the accelerator and the two officers went back to the police station. Ellis would go on to make a full report of the incident, one which he would remain steadfast as to its authenticity. There have been numerous sightings of strange happenings along this road since. Many motorists, for example, report a person suddenly appearing in the middle of the road, forcing them to swerve their car to avoid them. Upon looking back, the figure is no longer there. On New Year's Eve 1997, one motorist would make an official report of seeing a figure just appear in the road in front of them. The motorist had to swerve the car to one side to avoid hitting it and was perhaps lucky the traffic was unusually quiet due to the holidays. When he looked back, there was no one there. Coincidentally or not, the road does have a particularly high accident rate. And perhaps more interestingly, many of those reports mention a person appearing in the middle of the road. Many more sightings speak of children playing under the pylons in the fields alongside the roadway. Many people believe these to be the spirits of children who perished down the many mine shafts in the area. Several particularly chilling reports speak of an unseen person banging on the roof of their cars. Some even speak of their vehicles shaking violently. The cloaked figure also still appears. Legend has it he is a monk who fell out of favor with the church. His body, so the legend says, resides here in an unmarked grave. The Ten Mun Road in Hong Kong opened in 1977 when still under British colonial rule. Since then, it has had hundreds of fatal crashes. What's more, it's had no modernization of any kind despite the increasing demands of modern traffic. In short, it is a road that simply was not designed for the amounts of traffic it is now seeing. Add to this the design of the road was flawed to begin with and the use of poor materials, and it's easy to see why it appears to be such a death trap. Many crashes, at least according to the survivors, are down to people suddenly appearing in the middle of the road. Many believe the people in the roads are spirits of those who died here. And as the fatal road crashes continue, so do the spirits who reside here increase. In Australia is a small, narrow street, more akin to an alley, that follows the rail viaduct in Jubilee. The area has a long history of crimes, including murder. It also has a long history of paranormal sightings and of overwhelming those who go there. Many express feelings of fear and anxiety. They also experience strange odors as well as hearing footsteps around them even though there is nobody there. Apparently small children and even dogs in the area also begin to act strangely while in the area. There have been numerous bodies discovered here, many of whom were the obvious victims of murder. Investigations into many of these deaths, however, remain unsolved perhaps adding to the strange and depressing feel of the street. Thanks for listening, and be sure to stick around for the bloopers at the end. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me anytime with your questions or comments at darren at WeirdDarkness.com. Darren is D-A-R-R-E-N. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can find information on any of the sponsors you heard about during the show, find all of my social media, listen to audiobooks I've narrated, sign up for the email newsletter, find other podcasts that I host, 
Visit the store for Weird Darkness merchandise and more. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression or dark thoughts. Also on the website, if you have a true paranormal or creepy tale to tell, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. All stories on Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find links to the stories or the authors in the show notes. Weird Darkness is a registered trademark. Copyright Weird Darkness. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. Psalm 1, verse 6. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. And a final thought, nothing worth having was ever achieved without effort. Theodore Roosevelt. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the weird darkness. Unsolved and unsolved uh, can also be found in New Jersey along the tentatively in New Jersey along the tentatively ti uh, titled tentatively titled tentatively titled that's a lot of T's and D's tentatively titled. Instead, however, stick to instead, however, stuck her head out of the passenger window. The stretch in question is between the stretch in question in between the Belchin Tunnel on the A2 motorway between Bas the Belchin Tunnel on the A2 motorway between Basel and Chiasso in Switzerland is also home to a ghostly presence. <laughs> the Belching Tunnel? No, the Belgian Tunnel. Let's try that one again. The Dunvingen Bridge in Alberta. Dunvingen. Dunvin the Dunvingen. NVG. Dunvingen. Who puts a V and a G back to back like that? Well, I can't find a pronunciation anywhere, so I'm just going to make it up. Who lived close, lived close by? Texas rancher who lived close to by close to, why do I keep saying close? It's close. One which he would remain steadfast as to its authenticity. One which he would remain steadfast to as it's to a Since then, it has had hundreds of <sighs> for crying out loud. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. And I have forgotten to get myself a Bible verse. Okay, got to go, go, go do that now. Okay. <laughs>